go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Michelle Fay, and I'm an Island House resident. I have been for about 15 years, and I'm also the mother of two young children who are Asian and Latino. And I guess I just, I'm concerned because when I had first heard about the incident, which actually to me does not seem like it's really about marijuana smoking because it's not even clear if that's what was happening, but what was clear was that there was an assault. And for the response to be rather immediately a call for greater policing, uh, to me it's not reassuring. And it's also not reassuring to me that the response from public safety is that we should make policies for enforcement more like NYPD. I've been a social justice and racial justice advocate for my entire career, but I don't think you need to be one to see, especially in New York City, the benefits that we've had and also the damage that we've suffered by unfair policing tactics. And so for, I want to push back a little bit on your response that if you see somebody with marijuana, whether it's lit or not, that you have to make an arrest, uh, because that's, I think, actually, legally speaking, not according to the directive that Mayor de Blasio had issued, and also because I think the point of not having a hardline approach is because Roosevelt Island is special. We want more of a community-based approach as opposed to a one-size-fits-all approach. And the point of that is not because we just want to be soft on crime, but rather because we've seen the damage that is done by communities, by stop and frisk policies, right, which have been used by the police for decades specifically to rope young people of color, for the most part, into the criminal justice system and often for very minor offenses such as marijuana possession. So I think we want to be careful about increased surveillance, increased policing, and we probably want to look for an approach that kind of involves the community more and that treats us as partners. And when you say, for example, that the that you just need the community to Can you can you finish your thoughts, please? Yes. When you want the community to report crimes more, I think there also has to be a recognition on your end that there's a reason for a mistrust between communities and the bodies that police them. Um, and that that is something that has to be addressed. And so it's not just on our end, it has to be a community-wide effort. And I think that part needs to be acknowledged as well. Thank you. I'd just like to respond, and, and I thank you for your concern. But I think that one of the things that we were talking about and speaking about when we speak about community policing is having the police officers on patrol so that you can feel safe going to and from your school to your resident. Not that we're going to be out on the street actively and aggressively uh, tracking down people, but we are going to enforce the law in the same, same instance. But we are going to have our officers near the schools so that when parents are going to the schools and leaving the schools, that you feel safe. Not that we're, that, and we want to promote that, that for, for our community. Can I just say something quick? Um, I think we've been working with the Public Safety Department, uh, the Public Safety uh, Committee, on trying to uh, use ed education uh, with our children and to make sure and it's been very it's been a good working relationship that we are not punitive that we are responsive and educative I just wanted to respond to Michelle thank you very much uh, for your comments uh, and and therein lies a bit of a dilemma on one hand you have folks that are absolutely livid over the smell of marijuana on the island and whether we should take a hard or soft approach. And as I said earlier, simply put, if you're smoking a lit marijuana cigarette in public, and, and we see that, because we do have to see it, you're going to be either be summoned or arrested. Uh, we just, we, we can't have two sets of rules. Uh, I have an investment in this community. Uh, I have 18-year-old twins that will tell you I spend more time here than at home. Uh, I work with, and along with Jeff, we've been working with these younger people. It breaks my heart when I see them become 17 years old, 16 years old, and having to go through the system after being arrested. Uh, it hurts. So we have to take a more worldly view of this. Uh, we recognize the complaints. And we also recognize the need for enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, I'm 
hit everything, so I made some notes. <laughs> I'm Kaya Mead, and I live in River Cross. Um, and I came tonight, and thank you very much for hosting us, mostly just for educational purposes. I was aware of the incident, confused by some of what the community response was, including the flyer. Thank you for explaining the genesis of that. I think it was helpful. Um, but I just, so I have a bunch of questions that I still feel are foggy, and I just was wondering if you could explain a little bit of what the policy, precedent, and jurisdiction and procedures are right now, and where in sort of your scaffolding of crime, because it's not a high crime island, so for somebody who's just not involved in this world at all, and I hear in small, see a small pot, I'm like, is this a priority? Is it not a priority? Are you dealing with a bunch of domestic violence? Do we have a terrorist cell? Like, where in this world does this hit you and your life? How many officers do you have on staff that can make arrests? Thank you for explaining sort of the threshold of that. Um, and what are the plans uh, for this response, especially if, you, if we're able to develop a more multi-pronged community response? I loved the idea, especially I would expand it further to say multi-generational response to the, because I'm a new resident, I've only lived here for four years, and middle-aged, but um, like where does that fit when Cornell comes and expands? And then from a personal level, like I was completely threatened and appalled at the attack and very reassured that that person does not live on the island. Um, but I know that there are people in the subway and out on the north end of the island that are regular pot smokers, I would infer dealers, um, and I'm sure just on my very little awareness of that topic. There are people who know more about that that are prof probably also in fur dealers. I wonder why someone who is tripping out on drugs if they don't have a cigarette or a joint with them can't be arrested. And I've been, ex I'm confused about, goes back to the procedural precedent issue. When I go to the MTA and say I smell pot in the subway, they're like, well, if you're past the turnstiles, it's the MTA, NYPD, but so, and I've been told public safety will not respond to any um, obvious drug dealing and usage in the subway because they're past the turnstiles or they're below or whatever. So, lots of questions. Um, and thank you. I, I feel a lot better knowing your background. I'm really sorry that I mean, you have to educate the whole community. It takes a long time to tell everyone. That's fine. Um, so much of what you said deserves an answer. Thank you. I, I, I think we can answer part of it, but I would really appreciate the opportunity to sit down and discuss this at length. Um, Not at all. It is a priority, and that's why we're reacting to it. Uh, first of all, someone that's assaulted, um, as the incident back in uh, earlier in you know in December, uh, you don't want to hear that this is the safest place in New York City, and I respect that. Uh, the reality of it is, it, it is. We have the quickest response time of, of you know in any neighborhood in the city. Uh, but, you know, we have, you know, I'm responsive, Kevin's responsive, we hear you about the marijuana, it is a priority. Uh, as for somebody that's kind of wandering around uh, uh, looking like they're drunk, uh, you know, we, we'll address that, uh, you know. Okay. Hello. Uh, I, I don't want to give a statistic that I can't back up, but I will tell you that when it comes to vertical patrols in these buildings that were described before, it takes about 75% of my evening tour resources. Um, Do you have all yep. the traffic stuff? Yeah, uh, you, you said something about Cornell? No, that, that's an excellent point. Uh, however, it, it's not going to be the case. 
We, we just uh, had a meeting yesterday with the 114 precinct, who is our neighborhood precinct, uh, the operational lead and the security lead for, the, for when Cornell um, begins to, we we're actually working on it now, and we have a dialogue with them. They will have their own security force. Uh, they will also have one of our radios, and we will have one of theirs, so we can communicate and get to an incident quickly. Uh, additionally, um, a lot of campuses around the United States have blue lights. Blue, blue lights uh, is, is a sign, like if you happen to be jogging and you don't have your cell phone with you, you'll be able to call uh, public safety from that phone. And we're gonna have a camera attached to it also so we can uh, just get as much information as we can. But that, uh, that after discussing this with the Cornell uh, security and operational leadership, we found that uh, in addition to our uh, call boxes on the island, that we would like to get some of these blue lights uh, and the apparatus on our island too. Uh, like right now, there is, there is not a CCTV camera uh, down at Lighthouse Park. This would be a perfect place for it. And I, I think the end result is that folks feel safer. There's so much more that I'd like to respond to, but I, I, I honestly mean, I'm probably one of the easiest people to find on the island. Thank you.